It was a great win. It was a great team win. I'm um, very happy for you know, a number of things that happened during the game. Uh, we preached to our team about being able to uh, match Edward Waters' intensity. Uh, we having some young players kind of sometimes always concerned about that. I uh, thought they went out and they matched their intensity and did a really good job there. Their effort was good. Um, I love the way what we did on offense. I uh, found a way to run the football. Had you know three 100-yard rushers. I, I thought, and the thing that was most important, I thought I saw it on the field. But really, after you know coming back and and seeing some of the film footage, was just the chemistry in the offense fly. Uh, certainly, one of their better days up front. Uh, those holes would not have happened had it not been for you know how they blocked on the offensive line. So very pleased about that. Dominic Schaffner, you know, flashed. Um, went in there and did some really nice things as a young guy. You know, he's just showing that you know every time he takes a step back, he'll take two forward. And so the learning curve thing continues, but he's showing that he's getting around the corner. He's getting around the curve, and, and that was pleasing to see. Defensively, I like our effort. And, uh, you know, I was just a little disappointed. Some of the young guys maybe lack some of the intensity towards the end of the game and, and, and trying to maintain a lower score. I think that's something we can point to as to, you know, why you all have to develop some more uh, before you get regular playing time. But happy for the alumni. Uh, happy that the administration is happy. Anytime Dr. Ingrid Wicker McCree and, and Chancellor Akinley are happy, then uh, I'm a happy camper. So uh, we, we just got to keep it moving. Um, moving to Bethune Cookman Bethune Cook really fast. Uh, how much does that play in the way the game ended last year? Kept you up at night since that game? <laughs> it's going to keep me up for a long, long time. But uh, it. Uh, uh, it Coaches, you know, you have your internal battles and things like that. But at the end of the day, I realize I don't play. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to share with right now, but, you know, you do have some you second guess and thought, you know, what would you have done differently and whatnot. So you hope that that moment comes up again and you're, you're much prepared this time. Um, we're certainly trying to preach to our players about, you know, what, what Bethune was able to do last year to kind of upset the path that we were on and are looking to, hoping to repay them, um, you know, from last year. Uh, but... These are what's happened over the last three, four years with us and Bethune Cookman is there's a certain level of respect. And I think both teams realize that, you know, the winner of their game against one another is going to have a chance uh, to possibly play for a, a, a MIAC championship. And so that's why the games are so intense. No one wants to lose. Uh, there's a battle to the end. And, 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 and I think that's where that type of uh, intensity, close game competition comes from. We're both aware of what, what the programs are striving to do. And, um, you know, and, and the winner has a chance to go on and, and be successful. The last two games here have ended, like, on the last play in some, some crazy ways, the Hail Mary, the block field goal. I mean, what, what's the history there? It's like some weird history between you guys and the way it ends. I, 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 the only way I know how to describe it is, is just a, a, a fighting nature, a fighting spirit, a will to win. And I, I think um, – I know Coach Sims is a really good coach. Uh, uh, Mr. Thompson runs a, a, a very good athletic department. And when they set their standards, they set it pretty high, and that's to win and have success. And uh, we're trying to, to accomplish the same things. And so when you have two, two uh, programs, teams like that, nobody wants, to, nobody wants to lose, nobody wants to fail. And so you just battle till the final, final whistle. I imagine the guys who played in those last two games here against Bethune Cook, you don't have to preach them to play to the final rules. They, they, they know it's not over until it's over when you play these guys. Well, and so that, that's, uh, if, they, if there's a concern I have, is that we have some, uh, uh, some new members to the party, so to speak, that really quite don't understand. And, and they're figuring this stuff out game by game. You know, uh, Dell State was a, a lesson uh, for, for, for those guys. But you're right. The veterans, uh, they know what this is about. They know what kind of Bethune-Cookman team they're going to see. Um, the younger lines, you know, they don't really know. And that could be a good thing or, and a bad thing. And so uh, uh, the game and the process is going to kind of, you know, kind of um, – uh, uh, let them know this is what it's all about. They're going to have to learn it, I guess is what I'm saying. Coach, uh, <clears throat> with that said, with the old guys and new guys, you're battling also a short week. Talk about that preparation. That has been a challenge. You know, we, and the good thing is being here uh, for Central for going on five years now is, you know, we've had some, some early week games before. We, we've got templates to set up practice schedule. I felt that our young men have done a very good job of uh, – really putting, putting together two good days of practice on Sunday and then yesterday. And, uh, we know, the challenge is to see if we can get a third one in today. Um, so, but the, uh, the time constraint has been, it's been challenging. You know, you, you just don't have a chance to, to go over all the games or all the, the conference games that they've played and, and scout them in the way that you would like to. And so, we, you know, we're, we're just going to approach it like both teams are going to keep things as simple. 
with as much carryover from the last two competitions. And um, hang your hat on that. And uh, make sure our guys know how to line up, where to line up, and get them to play hard. Coach, with the MEAC championship pretty much out of the question at this point, what are you preaching to your kids, your first time in this position, about football in the, no in the month of November? Well, you know, uh, that, that's a good question because I'm not, I, I'm not uh, so convinced. <laughs> and uh, I'm the – um, Lynette will disagree with me, but I'm the optimist. I'm the ultimate optimist. And uh, uh, I, with what happened on the weekend, this past weekend with FAMU and Howard, you know, I remember in 2014 where uh, there were five two-loss MEAC teams that uh, shared, uh, co-shared the conference championship uh, just through the way the tiebreakers fell. And I don't know where all those lie, but I say that to say this, with so many games still in hand, anything could happen. And so we, we, we've been given to me a second life in terms of, hey, we need to approach this as – playoff football. I remember that 14 team um, going into homecoming uh, with a losing record, coming out, I believe, uh, even, and then either they lost another one and then won three straight to win the championship or co-champions or something in that form. And so this path has kind of gone similar. Yeah, it's, it's an uphill battle. We, we understand that. But there's a lot to play for. There's a winning record. Um, uh, uh, that's something that we, you know, we've, we've had here uh, for the last four years. We want to continue in, in that. We want to continue to be a uh, uh, a successful MEAC you know, team, have a winning record within, within the conference. So the approach has been there's still plenty to play for. You know? Once again, you're you know, playing on Thursday night you know, on television and everything for the central fans to see you, see you on uh, ESPNU. Just talk about that fact. Well, you know, anytime we get a chance to, um, in my opinion, promote the brand, that is a great opportunity. And, um, you know, and that's why it's important that we try to give the best presentation, representation of ourselves, um, not only just as a student athlete, the football program, but for North Carolina Central University. And, uh, you know, it has ties to, you know, recruiting, um, certainly um, uh, for admissions purposes. And um, then people get to see our uniforms on TV and, and uh, you know, our logos and things like that. And so uh, that, that, that's a... Uh, that, that's a very important thing. Uh, I think our players are going to be fired up about just the opportunity to play on, on, on an ESPN network. And um, uh, I just hope that, that come game time, we all realize the important significance of the game. You know, that that's important, that we, we compete and, 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 and play the very best we can. He's back on the depth chart <clears throat> this weekend. Andrew Dale expected to play? Yes, he is. Thank goodness. Yes, he is. Has he been full strength at practice? I know I saw him last week. He, he had been practicing. Yes, you know we, we've we've taken uh, some time off. He's taken some time off to try and get him back as f uh, full health as possible at this point in time. Knowing that we go into this MIAC stretch, uh, we felt that you know Jalen Barrington and and some of the guys on the old line have really stepped up and done some really positive things to give us a chance in the last couple of outings. So, although one didn't really go our way. And so, um, you know, uh, going back to Norfolk, some guys have stepped up, and that has gave, given Andrew time to even to be off his feet a little more and healed up. And so certainly looking forward to his performance uh, will, be, will be needed uh, for this type of football game, no doubt. Looking at Bethune-Cookman, what is it that, that they do well? Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I was just asked that question a little earlier. That the MEAC is known for running the football. The, 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 the successful teams in the MEAC that win the, win the conference championship year in and year out, they find a way to run the football. You know, that, that school in Greensboro, they've got a lethal two-headed monster. Um, in some ways, Howard has a lethal two-headed monster with a, with, with, with a quarterback. Bethune has two three-headed monsters. We like to think we have two as well. And so we've got to stop the run on defense. They're very, very... Uh, powerful running football team. Uh, they have playmakers on the perimeter that if they choose to throw it around, that could be a nightmare. So we're going to have to be sound in that area. Well, I anticipate they're going to try and pound the football, so we have to be good defensively. And on, on offense, we purpose and want to run the football. We've shown, demonstrated a little bit over the last, uh, well, certainly this last game and the one before that, uh, a couple before that, we can run the football when we're when we're, the chemistry is good up front, when we're, we're, we're blocking with the right assignments. So we want to do that. And I think special teams is going to, is going to play a will of a game uh, because uh, uh, Bethune's got some capable guys. Jimmy Robinson goes back there. Kevon Mitchell, good, good ball handlers that are all explosive. Uh, our cover teams are going to have to be very, very good at uh, containing those guys. And so I think, you know, offensively, we've got to run the ball and take care of it, not turnovers. Defensively, we've got to stop the run and get off the field on third downs. And then I think, uh, I think ultimately special teams is going to be a deciding factor.
This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.